Hi, Jason here with Production Voices. I'm excited to show you the Halfling Library. I'm going to call up Contact. I've already got it uh, set up here and uh, ready to load. I've got the Halfling Library set up on my solid state drive. Let's just take a look at the folder hierarchy and what we have here. I'm just going to move this over so that it makes a little bit more sense on my screen after. So this is Contact 6 running, and this is not for Contact Player. Uh, the Halfling, we have the version history here. This should say version 1.8. Zero, uh, the user manual you can get in and see with the user manual just well, how to install all the features and so on. So if please read that once you get it, you can browse through and see what's going on with that. Now, Halfling samples folder just contains the samples. This contains some data in here, but the main instruments are inside of the instruments folder. Version one release has three main instruments: the Halfling, the Halfling sings, and the Halfling reverse. So the Halfling is where most of the instruments are. Uh, Halfling Sings just specializes in some vocal uh, presets, some vocal spells that you will see. And then the reverse obviously has some reverse samples in there so that you can uh, get some different types of sounds. And um, let's take a look. So uh, I'm going to pull this in. In another video, we'll show you how to install the snapshots and get everything working. But this is just uh, an overview of the actual Halfling instrument itself. So the Halfling is loading up. You don't want to change presets until this white line goes across, and that's the solid state uh, drive loading up and you can see that I'm on the snapshots presets if you're on the info tab here you're gonna see the outputs and the MIDI channels but we're gonna switch over to the snapshot so that you can go through and grab the preset so uh, the first initialized preset is the piano I have a uh, huge latency when I play just because I'm doing screen capture so it's difficult for me to play anything with some sort of feedback so uh, let's just go through on this main page here what we have the presets what that we have here are, are all for the upright so then the upright piano is the main part of the halfling and uh, we've got some awesome sound design uh, what we call spells in here as well so if we were to go through and grab the halfling and go upright warmth uh, then it's going to change the preset <laughs> Okay, and then let's just grab that again with um, something else. Let's just do just enough room. And then just give you an idea of what's going on with these other things. There's one that said, uh, I thought I had a natural room in there. There it is, upright natural room. There it is. So that's the actual sound of the room. Room microphones only, as you can see. So um, moving on, we can see in this interface with the halfling up top here, you have the reverb presets. If you grab a reverb preset before changing either a snapshot or a preset over here, it's likely to cause all your faders to reset. This is a common thing amongst our interface. Um, this is not much we can do about that. It's just a kind of a bug in the system based on how the presets are set up. But all the reverb here are custom IRs that are created for this library um, that are, are production voices custom IRs, I should say, that uh, go across Concert Grand as well as Production Grand 2 and made it into the Halfling. This interface is similar to those other um, interfaces. Let's take a look at the controls on the main page. So across this middle section, we have touch response, sympathetic resonance, key up, release, pedal noise, and continuous pedal. All of these settings are also set up on the settings page over here. They're just conveniently located on this main page so that you don't have to change the page when we get it. I'm going to take a look at sympathetic resonance at the moment. I'm going to press a low G and then show you that sometimes you need to reload the sympathetic resonance to get it to work. I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on, and then I should get it now. Let's just see what happens when we Increase it, there it is. So I'm holding a low G, and you can see it down here. And when I hold that low G, uh, you are also going to get it. as I play across the keyboard, you're going to hear the resonance come through. I'm going to do A flat. and you can adjust the sympathetic resonance over here. Uh, typical on a piano, right? You can get that resonance. Uh, touch response, if we go back to it, it is how the keyboard responds to velocity and volume. So typically if I play something very soft, it's, um, if I crank this all the way up, the touch response, 
that's going to sound very soft. But if I play the same velocity and I bring it, the touch response down, you're going to start to hear it at a lower or a much higher volume, and you'll also hear the noise lower come up on the samples. Typically, most people have it around this 80% ranger in this area here, and you'll have to experiment with that for your own playing. Key up is um, the mechanical noises, and so I have to hold down the pedal in order to get this to work. And I'm going to increase the volume. You can hear the sympathetic resonance in the key ups happening at the same There's a latency on my um, controller while I do a screen capture, so that's why it's kind of weird when I play this. But uh, there's the key up and noises, and uh, they sound pretty good on this piano. You can get a lot of wood knocking happening on the upright. Uh, the release volume is when you let up on the key. Um, let's just give it a try. And you see that that's a little bit loud and with some noise. Uh, you can set that properly over here. There you go. And you get more of a natural sound. Uh, lots of range on here for the volumes. You can see that if you adjust the touch response and the release, you can get some The noise floor will come up. Uh, pedal noise. As I press the pedal down, you can hear the round robin that's going through in each of the samples. Continuous pedal, you're going to leave on. This just influences the, if you have a continuous pedal controller, I'm going to put it about halfway down. And you can hear that it kind of lets some of the sustain go through. Uh, here's the sustain all the way. And then if you half let up on a pedal, it also does some catch pedaling as well. So typical piano type things. Okay, now moving on to the volumes over here. So what we have in each section is the first section, one, two, three, four here is the upright piano and these controls are dedicated to the upright piano volumes. So these are the volumes and these are the reverb sends for each of the four stereo microphone perspectives. So essentially it's eight microphones on this piano. Uh, we have hammer mics, which are right in front of the hammers. We have upper on the upper part of the piano, lower where I took the uh, front plate off the upright and so that it exposes the lower strings and put microphones in it and then or TF room just you know, a little bit behind the player position to get a little bit of sense of space on this piano. So you can control the volumes here and the reverbs there. We'll take a look at more of this on the settings page. The next one and uh, next three are the three layers of the spell samples. Now the spell samples include a voice, they could include a bunch of other things, but they're all labeled on here. So if I go to the enchantment page for a section, second, pardon me, and turn off the main upright and turn on the spell and uh, let's just see if I can. yeah so then we're getting just the um, halfling sings there and I believe 11 is the organ so then we have the ability to layer up uh, sound so what we have is 12 spells in each of the three spells for a total of 36 layers, 36 different sounds that can be combined together depending on which instrument you've loaded up. So then let's go back to the main. That's just the overview of the main. So essentially we have the presets, reverb, all the settings, volume, and reverb for each of the individual channels. The first four are for the upright piano and the next three are for the spells combined together. Let's go to the settings page. On the settings page, this is coming from the same mixer as Production Grand 2 and Concert Grand. And on each channel, you can have individual EQ. And as soon as you move the frequency on something, it will show you the frequency that it is. And you can command click, I believe, option click, whatever it might be to reset a setting. Let's just see what it is. Um, so yeah, it depends on if you're a Mac or a PC. So then you can click on that again to open it up. So this is all based on Contact's SSL emulations. And um, so you can have EQ and compression across every single channel. You can have reverb send. The reverb send is also, I should turn on the let's just turn on the natural room here for a second so i have this the room i'll show you the reverb if i turn it on down below the send is what's called pre-fader but you have to make sure that you have a little bit of volume coming out of it so here's the sound right now so very um deep in that church if i pull this down the volume you'll get just the reverb sound and then if i pull the reverb right down you'll here next to nothing, right? And so this is the room sound on its own. 
and then with the reverb added. And then if you pull the channel down, but not completely off, it will still send it to the reverb. So it's pre-fader reverb, which is pretty cool because you can create some effects and we do some resonance things with the presets um, with that as well. So uh, now that we're on the settings page, you can see we've gone through the EQ, compression, reverb, uh, solo, and mute. So solo, if I turn on a couple of these spells and we see what we get, just a random... things happening. I'm going to take that organ and add some reverb to it. I might as well add some reverb to the piano as well. I'm just going to go to my enchantment page for a second and see what the other spells are. So uh, 11 and 12. So then if I go back to the settings page, what I can do with all of these on, each of the channels has an on off button. And as I hover over them with the mouse, you can see them going on and off. And then this is the volume for each individual track. So you can see here, if I command click on the volume, it's gonna bring it up back up to what's called unity gain, neither adding or subtracting from the main volume. So now I can solo or mute any of these. So if I don't wanna hear the organ, temporarily I can mute it with the M button. If I want to hear what's on channel uh, seven over here, six, pardon me. This is the just a flute organ rank. And what's the next one? So we're getting like this crystal bowl sound. And then if I add some reverb to it. Right, and then I this with the solos and mutes, it allows me to kind of sculpt my sound a little bit. Underneath, you'll see here it says master, but if you have output set up in your digital audio workstation for a multi out and contact, it will allow you to take any one of these tracks and put them out to a different output. And so then that way you can set these up to not all come out of a stereo bus, but they can have individual. Uh, tracks within your, your DAW as well, so that you're not stuck with just the mixer settings here. That would allow you to apply your own EQ to just um, this crystal vase sound or something if you wanted to. If you said, okay, I want to, I like the sound, but I want to EQ some high end into it, uh, you could do so uh, without affecting the rest of the sound by sending this out to one of your outputs and choose your own EQ in that case. So uh, let's move down into the reverb section. The reverb section has uh, convolution reverb as well as algorithmic. And so then uh, this is just you know, kind of like a lexicon type thing where it's, it's using computer math algorithm to simulate the space. And then the convolution is the impulse response is the actual sound recordings of a room. So you can go through and you can select different uh, reverb spaces from here. Next we have the velocity controls. Uh, this is going to affect just the piano, I believe. And in order for that to be heard, I am going to turn on the upper and lower, turn off the room. I'll solo these two channels and it loaded pretty quickly. So then you can turn on the velocity curve. Your velocity curve will just, uh, you can change the strength right here. So then, and then uh, whether we want it to be to be a little more aggressive or not. If you command click or whatever the equivalent is on the PC side, maybe control, I'll bring you back to Unity Gain. You can turn on and off your velocities. These do not save with your presets in the snapshots. They only save if you save over the halfling or uh, save this as a new setting. Here's your touch response, which we've always seen before. Pedal, uh, you can leave the pedal noise and this is the volume from the pedal noise. Uh, so it's whenever you press down the sustain pedal. That sound there as you go through it, round robins through. Continuous pedal, you should leave on. Uh, even if you don't have a continuous pedal, it helps with the round robin on the sustain pedals. Sympathetic resonance, we showed you on the first page. A release and key up, we showed you as well. They're just a continuation over here. Let's get into the fun things on the enchantment page. So on the enchantment page, I'm going to go in and... Um, yeah, maybe I'll start with soloing. 
and then have to go back and turn on the rest of these so we have everything working together and then maybe I'll change this to be choir So we got some weird uh, choir and noises and such. So what I can do is, I wish I had solos on these. It was just the interface is so busy as it is. I'm going to solo this one and spell one as it is. Let's go into the enchantment page and explain what's happening. First, the main upright right here, when you turn this uh, on off button it turns off all four microphone perspectives so even if you have only one microphone perspective on it's gonna this is like a global on off this edit button chooses all the editing parameters down here for just this upright and then this is an overall master volume for the upright same thing if we go across there's a spell if we choose edit then it's going to change all your adsr and everything that you have the settings for that spell that you've got selected and so on for spell two and so on um, one of the common things that i even do occasionally is i'll edit something and say why isn't it working but uh, you have to choose the edit button for the right um, layer that you want to use in order to get this to work so let's just uh, i'm going to solo that organ and just show you that you can change, for example, the amplifier settings. So this is going to be a lot slower. And let's see if I can get that to go really slow as the attack. You can see it's growing as it goes in. And you can change the release of the sound as well. So you can see, it. and I can shorten it up too as we go through. Uh, next we have the low pass, high pass filter. And you have some resonance on that as well. And uh, I can do the same thing on the high pass filter. And then add some resonance to it. And create some synthesizer type sounds out of that. You can also have envelope generators for both the filters and the pitch. So if you want the pitch to go up, you can just play a note here and increase the amount. And then I'll dip down on the uh, less than 12. It's going to go up and then it's going to follow that pitch envelope. And if you command click, oh, yeah, we're going to bring this back up to neutral. There we go. And I'm going to bring the pitch back and then we should all be good. I'm going to bring the attack back. Uh, the cast morph over here is a phaser. And maybe I'll change this to a different setting. Just so. Uh, let's see. There we go. We're getting some resonance from it. So this does um, phasing, this does an echo. So I'll go back to the organ, add some delay. You can hear it being slow. I'll speed it up. The more feedback, you'll get more of those echoes. Then you can adjust the panning, the feedback, and so on. Disintegrate is like a bit crusher. Nice noise color, right? You can change this and you can... I still have the resonance coming through. It's one of the things that I should turn that off. Okay. There's our disintegrate. Can't hear anything, right? These are all the effects within... Um, contact that are just shown as the interface and uh, distort is obviously distortion and then you can choose tube and transient and so on uh, warp is just chorus and then there's a leslie effect let's put a pipe organ through a leslie um, and we'll just make everybody a little bit Something that's that effect. Yeah, I know that's sacrilegious, right? Putting a 
pipe organ through a Leslie speaker. Um, over here we have the low frequency oscillator. You can apply it to pitch, the two filters, and the volume for the amplifier as well. So then let's do it. I'm going to do it on pitch just to show you. It should be fairly simple. I'm going to increase the amount. The frequency is the speed, and then you have to choose one of these waveforms. I'm going to do triangles, so it's going to or square, pardon me. So it should it's going to jump between two pitches. How fast is by the frequency? And then the amount is over here. So now we have an octave. And then the frequency. And then you get the idea. If you want to turn this off, you can just turn the amount down. And then it just goes back to normal. Uh, you can get create a tremolo effect the same way. So then the tremolo is usually a triangle wave. And then... Uh, let's Change that speed, get it just right. And then this whole enchantment page is where most of the presets change all their fun things that they do. Let's see if I can just grab a preset to show you. Let's see if there's some good ones. Um, a full organ grows. Essentially what this is is on the organ. This is going to be a filter sweep of some type. Yeah, that's a low pass filter envelope right here that is going to sweep over time is what we're seeing. And that's pretty much it. Some reverb on it. Okay, uh, moving on to the master effects page. This is similar to Concert Grand and Production Grand 2. So we have the tape simulation. The tape simulation is just adding some warmth to the sound. Uh, there's a couple of presets over here that take care of that already. So then one of them is the, um, I believe the modern pop has it. There it is, yeah. So then I just want to make sure that, yeah, it just has the piano on it itself. Master EQ, this one actually does show you the frequency when you click in. Oh, it's not showing it. It should have been showing it in the settings. Maybe it's just when you turn on the EQ itself over here. There you go. That's where it's showing it. So let's go back into the master effects and see what we have. The transient designer is just going to affect either the attacks or the sustain. So if I want a faster attack, we'll get a very fast. It's clipping almost, right? And then to the extreme, no attack. hard to play. And then the same thing with the sustains. So it's like a kind of compression, but it really changes the transients, of course. Uh, next master compression, this is just a regular compressor, right? It's not much to it. A regular limiter over here, and then an overall master reverb send for all seven of the channels. So then if you want to increase the reverb... This is all coming back to the settings page, whatever happens to be on the reverb itself. So this is algorithmic at the moment. If we go back to combination. There we go. Pre delay might be a little bit more. Yeah. You can see we're clipping, so uh, be mindful of the clipping. So that's your overview of the halfling. Uh, where you can go up and select as soon as you install your snapshots over here, you can select any of these presets as well. So let's end you off on some sort of pad. Thanks for watching.